So good morning, everybody, and welcome to the presentation of, the, of this International Congress Green Europe 2022. I want to personally thank Giles Dixon, General Director of Green Europe, and the local institutional representatives, as well as those responsible for the associations and companies in the sector present today here at the Bilbao Exhibition Center. I also send a special and cordial greeting to the people who are following this event by streaming, with a desire to be able to greet them, all of them, personally in the spring of next year, 2022, here in the Basque Country. We have had a very hard year, really complicated, at the sanitary level, but uh, at the same time at the social and economic level. One year without mobility, one year without professional appointment in person. COVID is not uh, still over, but we are making progress in a slow recovery that is gradually bringing us closer to that reality dreamed by all of us. Prudence is the criteria under which we must continue working. This is the reason why this act is carried out with the limitations that correspond actually. The reason that uh, unites us today is the excellent news that the most recognized international event in the renewable energy sector, the Wind Europe 2022 event, will be held here in Euskadi. It is excellent news that we present precisely at the Global Exhibition Day here in the back in Bilbao. And as president of the Bilbao Exhibition Center, Beck, we could uh, not have a better gift and reason to celebrate this significant date in the sector. So thank you very much. Albiste bikaina da, Beken Euskadin Wind Europe ospatzea. Eta bereziki bikaina eta pozgarria kontutan hartzen badugu, Euskadi eta Europa osoa bezala, une honetan egin... She's now speaking in Basque and I'm afraid that there is no translation for Basque. I will interpret again as soon as she gets back into Spanish. Thank you. ...zentzo horretan. Kongresuaren dimentsioak neurri berezia erakusten du. Eta kongresua nazioarte mailan kokatzen gaitu Euskadi bezala, herri bezala eta enpresa bezala. 2000 emeretziko edizioak energia eolikoaren Europako elkartearen aurre ikuspena gainditu zituen hemen beken. Eta larogei herri aldeetako enpresa profesional erakarri genituen. Eta espezialitate honetan Europako itzordu garrantzitsuenak amar milioi eurotik gorako impactu ekonomikoa eragin zuen Euskadin. Nos hallamos, por tanto... So therefore, we have some excellent news. It's excellent news for the BEC as the exhibition center, and it's also excellent news for the Basque entity of energy that has worked to make this possible. So thank you very much, Inigo. And of course, this is also very important for the Basque industry, but above all, it uh, will help us uh, it will help the companies and the professionals of the Basque Country to position themselves in Europe and of the world. We are a leading power in the world of the wind energy sector, and it's a sector with uh, very high technological potential. And we have uh, companies with more than 15 billion euros in turnover, where we have 4,000 people working. And we have two um, leading companies in this industry, such as Iberdrola, which is the global operator, and Siemens Gamesa, one of the main international manufacturers of wind turbine generators that, are, that is present here at this uh, event that is so relevant for the Basque Country and also very relevant for the BEC. The Basque region is one of the very few regions in the world that covers the entire um, value chain of a wind farm. So in other words, this means that 100% of a wind farm can be designed and built here in the Basque Country. We have um, business fabric that is here capable of uh, constructing all of its elements with sufficient professional human resources that are ready to work on these new developments. And even though we are not profits in our own land, the Basque Country also has a major wind energy approach. We want it to be the major tool to advance in terms of uh, decarbonization, because right now 
the first uh, four projects have been designed after 10 years of not building any wind energy facilities. It's a complex process in which uh, we're going to be working to socialize this need we have at this point in time. And we have to develop these political and social agreements so that wind power can become a reality in the Basque country as regards uh, facilities. And this is something that also applies to the sea, in other words, to offshore energy with uh, facilities ready to experiment with uh, floating platforms in Arminza on along the coast in Bizkaya. And uh, at the beginning of next year, Bimet in Arminza will house a floating wind energy platform. And right now its construction is being finished at the port of Bilbao. This is being carried out by the Basque engineering firm Sentec. She's now speaking in Basque again. En proceso an erabili beharko dugun tresna garrantzitsua. Esaten duen, une honetan lau parke eolikoen tramitazioa martxan dugula. Jakin badakigu prozesu komplikatua dela eta izango dela ingurumena ikuspegitik modu garbi, garden eta zorrotzean jokatuko dugulako. Proiektuaren ezaugarriak ingurumen exigentzien arabera egokituko dira horrela behar baldima da eta akordio sozial eta politiko zabalak lantzeko asmoarekin ari gara. Oraingo honetan, aizea alde dugu eta euskadik ezin dio utxegin. Eta utzi ezue, baita ere, aipatzen nituen bi enpresa berezi hoiei, lagundu diguten enpresa hoiei, Iberdrolari, Xavier, eta Ximenz Gamesari, Andreas, thank you very much, eskerrik asko bioi, hemen egoteagatik eta laguntzeagatik. Beraz, besteri gabe, eskerra hauekin, espero dugu, ba, bi mila hogeita bian barkatu zue guztiok hemen izango zaretela. Indeed, senora consejera. And thank you for having us once more in Bilbao next year. As the CEO of Wind Europe, I am delighted to announce, together with Arancha Tapia and all of you here today, that the Wind Europe annual event 2022 will take place here in the Bilbao Exhibition Center from the 5th to the 7th of April next year. It will be the second time that the Wind Europe annual event has taken place here in Bilbao after the very successful event that we had with you here in 2019. We will be returning again in April next year with a full exhibition and a full conference covering all the aspects of onshore and offshore wind. The exhibition will showcase the latest developments in wind energy across Europe, how the technology is advancing, how wind turbines are more powerful and efficient and ever more sustainable, how the costs of wind energy continue to fall. The exhibition will show and the conference will show how wind is not only greening our electricity in Europe, but also helping to decarbonize all the other energy that we consume in our transport, buildings, and industry. It will show how industry and other large consumers of energy are now knocking at the door of the wind industry saying, please, we want to decarbonize, help us. Whether it's through the direct electrification of what they consume or the indirect electrification using renewable hydrogen. The conference at the event will cover all of the key market, technology and policy issues around wind energy and will feature leading speakers from governments across Europe, from across the industry and other stakeholders, and of course, will also have lots of international visitors from outside Europe. Next year's event here in Bilbao 
comes at a decisive time. The EU and national governments across Europe are counting on wind to help deliver their climate and energy targets. Wind today is 16% of all the electricity we consume across Europe. It's 22% here in Spain. It's 27% in Germany. And by 2050, the EU want it to be at least 50% of all of the electricity that Europe consumes. And of course, electricity will be a much higher share of Europe's total energy mix in 2050 than it is today. This implies a huge expansion in wind energy. For the EU alone, an expansion from the 180 gigawatts that we have today to 1,300 gigawatts of wind energy capacity in 2050, onshore and offshore wind combined. Already by the end of this decade, wind will become the number one source of electricity in Europe. Bilbao is a perfect place for our event. Bilbao, the Basque country, Spain, are a shining example of the economic value of wind energy. Bilbao is the global headquarters of two of the world's leading companies in wind energy, Iberdrola and Siemens Gamesa. The Basque country and the surrounding area play a leading role in the wind energy supply chain. Spain now has 30,000 jobs in wind energy. It is building two gigawatts of new wind farms every year, and Spain is exporting more wind turbines than wine. Bilbao, therefore, is a perfect place to show that wind energy not only is essential to tackle climate change, but is also helping to deliver jobs and economic growth. And the event next year will be organized by the wind industry, by Wind Europe, for the benefit of the wind industry. For this industry that in Europe now employs 300,000 people and contributes 37 billion euros to EU GDP every year. Thank you once again, Senora Consejera Tapia, for receiving us here. Thank you also to you, Ainara Basurko, the representative of the Fall Council of Biscaya, for receiving us. Thank you to you, Sabio Chandiano, as the councillor for Economic Development, Trade and Employment at the Bilbao City Council for receiving us here. Thank you to the Bilbao Exhibition Center. Thank you also to the Spanish Wind Energy Association, the Asociación Empresarial Eólica, for being our partner in this event. And thank you also to Jose Ignacio Omaeche, as the Director General of the Basque Energy Cluster. I'm now going to invite Ainara Basurko, as the Regional Deputy for Economic Promotion in the Fall Council of Biscaya, to come to the lectern and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eunon Gustioi, muy buenos días a todos y a todas, and hello to everyone joining us via streaming. It is great news that the annual Wind Europe event is returning to the BEC, Bilbao, Vizcaya, and the Basque Country. It's not just a magnificent opportunity for our wind and energy sector industry and all its associated companies. It also sends an important message of trust in recovery. Thank you for trusting in us once again. As you know, here, you will find a strong industrial fabric and leading wind energy sector companies. 
along with institutions that are firmly committed to industrial development in the renewable energy sector. A result of this commitment is, for example, the Energy Intelligence Center, an initiative designed to drive competitiveness and international leadership among vast country energy sector companies that is based on technological development and knowledge generation. LACM is a platform collaborative. This is a collaborative platform that will allow us to advance towards new technologies. In other words, it's an example. It's a strategic project that is based on one of the instruments that has uh, proved to be most efficacious for uh, the Basque country to make further progress, and that is a public and private partnership. And this international event offers a wonderful opportunity to showcase this institutional unity in relation to the development of renewables. And it also will showcase the strengths of the sector and the international leadership of some of our companies in the market, in the wind power market. The regional minister has already given you some data on the sector and on growth too. But we have uh, companies here that are promoting major projects uh, and that are also designing and manufacturing equipment and components and are installing wind farms and providing ancillary services. And we also have uh, very important technological centers, and she's now speaking in Basque. For which there is no translation, unfortunately. Optimistak izateko mesu garrantzitsua elerazten dute jardueraren berreskurapenari eta azkundeari begira. Win Europek aukera paregabea eskeniko digu ekitaldi handiak berriro egiteko eta geure burua ezagutarazteko ekonomia eta industria munduan, bai eta erakargarri den lurralde berritzailearen irudia proiektatzen jarraitzeko ere. Once again, forward to welcoming you with our best wishes and hope you will have a chance to discover Bilbao, Vizcaya and Basque Country. See you soon. Os esperamos zuen zain gaude eta eskerrik asko bene benetan. Eskerrik asko, senyora Basurka. I'm now delighted to welcome to the stage, Xavier Chandiano, who is the Councillor for Economic Development, Trade and Employment at Bilbao City Council. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Sailburu, Foru, Diputatua, representantes del ámbito empresarial. Good morning to everybody. The sector, because I'm not an expert, just a, a short message from the city perspective. And we are a lot of people here to talk in this press conference. Just to say thank you. I can remember very well uh, 2019. We are in a complicated context now because of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. And from the city perspective, just to give a, a big thank you to all the efforts a lot of people in this room has done to make it possible to host this incredible Congress next year. Eskerri Casco Benetan, oso garrantzitsua da, momentu zaila benetan daukagu horrengo honetan, eta bilboren, bilboentzako oso garrantzitsuak dira kongresuak. Eta kongresu honetan, ba, bueno, bi, bi zuta benik esango nuke direla garrantzitsuak. Alde batetik kongresua bera, eta bueno, ba, bos mila pertsona baino gehiago etorriko dira bilbora bizkaira eta euskadira, eta hori beraz eragin ekonomiko handia izango du gure lurraldean, eta alde batetik sektorea, baina bueno, sektoriari buruz, bai salburuak eta forrude apotatuak, eta horrengo eh, bos eramaleak esango dituzte gauza eh, bereziak. Nire alde eti besterik ez, I can remember very well at the Guggenheim Museum, I don't know if you remember, but I gave you this, so I cannot see now, but we will have the opportunity next year to, to enjoy again at the Guggenheim Museum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Senor Tandiano, and I look forward very much to wearing my lapel pin with great pride next uh, April. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now delighted to invite to the stage Juan Diego Diaz, the president of the Spanish Wind Energy Association. Juan Diego.
thank you very much. Egunon, uh, buenos dias. Uh, it's a to be here again in this presentation. Uh, we pushed very much to have this event here in 2019, and then again, we are here, we are back here. Como saben todos ustedes, en el año... And as you all know, in the year 2019, we hosted this uh, relevant event for the wind uh, energy sector in Bilbao, and with the participation of all of our companies and of uh, the high-level institutions. For the wind power sector in Spain, it's a great pleasure, and it's an honor to be here today announcing the date of what we know will become a reference uh, event in terms of onshore and offshore wind power in 2022. It's an event of wind power for wind power, and we're very proud about that. And the truth is that the expectations in our sector are very significant, and Wind Europe, without a doubt, will have the total and absolute involvement of our association of the AEE for this event to be a success again. And at this point in time, in Europe and in Spain, we are experiencing some very ambitious goals from the point of view of renewables. And uh, well, based on the installation of more wind power, and uh, all of our industry and the value chain has more than enough capacity to meet these goals. And today, wind power is the backbone of our electrical mix, and it's the leading technology in Spain as regards installed power with more than 27 gigawatts. And in the last 12 months, or throughout the entire um, period of the pandemic we've suffered, it's also been the leading technology in terms of generation with more than 60 terawatts hour. And many people, many technical experts, many of these people from here, from the Basque Country, have been working uh, constantly so that this uh, energy can reach our homes, this energy that has been delivered by the wind farms. So this uh, leading position in terms of power and generation is going to be maintained over the next decade until we achieve the objective of 50 gigawatts that we've set for the year 2030, according to the National Integrated uh, Plan for Energy and Climate. And this is a reality that we're experiencing nowadays and which is a very positive reality. And this is the end result of some wonderful and constant and responsible work that has been carried out by all the energy and industrial and innovation sectors that are strategic for the economy in the Basque country and for the economy of Spain and for the economy of Europe too. And as you know, both here in the Basque country as well as in Spain, we have 100% of the industrial value chain, as the um, regional minister pointed out. And it's something that's in the DNA of the wind sector from the very beginning, in the 90s. And uh, the presence of more than 230 industrial centers in our countries, in our regions, is uh, shows the strength and resilience of this sector that we've seen, especially during these very harsh months of the pandemic with a sector that has not kept still, a sector that has not only not stopped, but it's also continued to develop. It's continued with installations and continued with production. Because in Spain, we create technology and we manufacture equipment. We manufacture wind components too. And our country is the third country in terms of uh, international exports. It is true that in the European wind sector, we are going to have to address some major challenges together until the year 2030, both in terms of energy and industry. And we believe that the place to discuss these events, this uh, subject will be Bilbao and Win Europe 2022. But we have to discuss some very relevant issues like what are the future auctions going to be like? And um, what is uh, the standardization of uh, processes and permits going to be like? throughout Europe in such a way that we have stable and standard processes so that we can have a clear vision of the development of wind power and the territory because you know that renewables and the territory are producing a major debate as regards reaching what I said by the year 2050. In other words, that wind power be the epicenter of the energy mix and um, manufacturing in Spain. And there's another very significant issue that we'll be discussing here that has to do with the defense of our manufacturing and export capabilities to other markets. And this is something that is uh, more and more threatened because these markets are more and more protected and uh, with uh, tariff measures which from a global perspective can be considered unfair. And of course we cannot forget, as uh, the regional minister said, uh, the 
uh, this we have a wonderful opportunity in the Basque country and in Spain. And it's a wonderful opportunity because now that floating technology is becoming more competitive, the potential we have as a technological hub and as an industrial hub for the floating um, wind technology is immense. We are the first developer, developer on an international scale, even over and above countries like the United States and Japan. So, well, considering how important the wind power business is in Spain and in the Basque country and its position in Europe, well, the fact that wind Europe is coming back to be law is a landmark that will provide us with lots of energy and will make us feel very confident to put our stakes on the wind power business, a wind power business that is powerful in Europe. I'm sure that we're going to repeat the success of 2019, and I'm sure that we're going to improve the experience for all participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Diego. I'm now delighted to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, two of the four event ambassadors who will be the leading industry faces and voices at next year's event. First, the CEO of Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy and the current chairman of Wind Europe, Andreas Nauer. Andreas, the floor is yours. Yeah, welcome to everyone. And if uh, many of us think about what is the wind capital of Europe, I think it's extremely hard to say. And especially for a global company that has people in many, many cities, um, it's, it's hard to choose. But one thing is for sure that Bilbao will be on top or amongst the, the, the top three, whoever you ask. And I think that's an, an excellent starting point. So congratulations to Wind Europe, congratulations to to the region, to the city, that um, this important event is taking place here again. It's the second time after 2019, and I remember, I remember also the dinner in the Guggenheim Museum. I remember one special occasion, maybe especially for a German, we had royal uh, visit at our booth. So it was a fantastic event, and based on that experience and that excitement, I'm sure we can repeat it again and make it maybe even more exciting. Bilbao and the Basque country are, of course, pioneers in the wind industry. It was already set in Spain and in Europe. And with a constant drive that you have from the institutions, but also from the industry, whether it's Iberdrola, Siemens Gamesa, or other companies, I think that makes the Basque country clearly a technological and innovation benchmark in the sector. And we, as Siemens Gamesa, are only one of many companies. Some of our main suppliers in the wind industry are located in the Basque country. They manufacture for projects all over the world, and you can see them in projects that we do, whether it's in Denmark, in France, in Germany, all over the world. In Bilbao and the Basque country, therefore, lead the wind energy sector clearly in Spain. And, the, and Spain as a country is, as we all know, a world leader in installed capacity, technology, and innovation. And this leadership and the European recovery funds are for me and hopefully for many people here in Spain and the Basque Country, a unique opportunity for Spanish companies to lead areas that hold great potential for wind energy, whether that's floating that was mentioned, whether it's hydrogen. And we from Siemens Gamesa participate in many of these projects to develop these new technologies that will be needed in three years, five years, or even 10 years. These new technologies will help to keep cutting costs in wind energy, and develop new solutions that will contribute to reach the decarbonization targets that we've set in the countries and in Europe in general. Direct electrification that will increase from about 25% to over 60% by 2050, and renewable hydrogen that will help to decarbonize hard to abate sectors. These are two key technologies that we need in Europe to cut carbon emissions by 55% in 2030. In order to meet this target, we need a rapid expansion of renewable energies. And in case of direct electrification, we see clearly an increase in demand from large off-takers that now want to source green and cheap and competitive wind energy. In short, there's a great present, but as an excellent future for wind energy ahead, and that is especially true for Spain and in particular for the Basque Country. 
What better way to celebrate than with the event next year? Congratulations and all the best, and I'm sure it will be a great success. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. I'm now delighted to introduce the second of the uh, four event ambassadors who is with us this morning, the CEO of Iberdrola Renewables, Xavier Viteri. Xavier, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Giles, for this introduction. And I am uh, so glad uh, to be here with uh, Ms. Uh, Minister uh, Tapia, the Basque authorities and industry colleagues uh, to welcome our friends of Wind Europe uh, in Bilbao. Ongi de Torri, with the Cera, Ongi de Torri, uh, Iberdola de Cera. Thank you very much for trusting in Bilbao to celebrate uh, the Wind Europe annual event 2022. As you already know, Iberdola's history is very close to renewable energy. Starting more than 100 years ago, we being pioneer in hydro energy sources and uh, continuing over 20 years ago when we anticipated that uh, the uh, uh, wind energy would uh, actually be a key driver of the power systems. We are proud to say nowadays that Iberdrola is a global leader in energy, leading the wind production and being one of the uh, biggest or uh, largest uh, electricity companies by market capitalization. We are operating close to 35 gigawatts of renewable assets and working hard to continue keeping, uh, to, to keep uh, growing and to triple our renewable energy assets by the end of this decade. As uh, some of my colleagues has mentioned before, the Green Deal and the ambitious target that uh, uh, are defined by the European Union and by the member states are driving a huge volumes of investment to carbon neutral Europe by 2050. I think it is a great opportunity, and it's a great opportunity, and I mean not only for us developers, but I think also for all people. I mean, maintaining uh, Europe's global leadership in green energy, fostering the supply chains, uh, creating sustainable jobs, boosting innovation, and helping the economy recovery of Europe after this global pandemic situation. Iberdrola, and I would say that I talk on behalf of all the industry, entire industry of Europe, we are ready to deliver these huge volumes of investment. But obviously, to reach this, we have to work and we have to push all together. We need to invest in uh, infrastructure, ports, grids, we need also to invest in innovation. We need to invest in supply chains. But also, improvements are needed in permitting. And the most important thing, regulatory stability, avoiding unexpected surprises or churches, which scare, as all you know, investors. We know from experience that with the right policy support, technologies can develop quickly, and the cost can come down fast. We think, I think we have a great example in the maturity that we have been able to achieve in the offshore business in the, in the last years. And now, we also expect the European Union will be uh, leading the innovation and development of the uh, renewable hydrogen. As all of you know, direct, de 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 direct electrification based on renewable energies will be the main pillar of discarbonizing the final consumption of energy in Europe. And this is clear. And why? Because renewables are the more efficient and it's also the most, the cheapest alternatives. But as uh, also something has to be taken into account for those hard to electrify, uh, electrify hard to abate sectors needs, such as shipping, aviation, high temperature uh, industry, renewable hydrogen uh, produced with 100% of Electricity is the perfect means to achieve this goal of climate uh, sustainability and neutrality. And again, in this sense, Iberdrola is working hard to lead, produce, and support the development of hydrogen the, or renewable hydrogen as the way to go to discarbonize these needs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Xavier. 
I'm now delighted to introduce to you the Director General of the Basque Energy Cluster, Jose Ignacio Omaeche. Jose Ignacio, the floor is yours. Thank you, Giles. What can be said that has not already been said, but anyway, I'll try to highlight some of the ideas that, that have already been mentioned. Uh, I think that uh, having, having chosen Bilbao as the upcoming venue for the Win Europe event in 2022 shows that the Basque Country is one of the most important industrial wind power hubs in Europe. This has already been mentioned, and I think that this only confirms what was said before. But in any case, the excellent position of this value chain that the regional minister has uh, described is one of the key elements. Although we have to recognize the importance that uh, large corporations have, like Iberdrola and Siemens Gamesa, because they've also provided support and sponsorship for the event. But in any case, I would like to make a mention and recognize this collective of more than 100 companies, as the regional minister pointed out, that form part of this value chain. And we have the honor of representing and of integrating in the association and the energy cluster of the Basque Country. And these are the companies that manufacture the components and they manufacture the systems too. And they also manufacture all those uh, parts that make it possible to um, generate wind power that have been manufacturing these components for 25 years and have been innovating and above all have been competing, have been competing at a global level. Firstly, in the 90s um, that were mentioned when the Spanish market started, but in any case, they've been competing at a global level for many years in terms of quality, in terms of prices, services and uh, global implementation and the fact that these are SMEs doesn't really mean that they have less capacity to uh, manufacture components in those parts of the world where this is necessary and where they have to be to participate in the market. And I think that it's uh, this effort that sometimes is not that visible and is more hidden in the different industrial estates and in the different uh, towns and cities of the Basque Country, but I think that it's worthwhile recognizing these efforts because it so happens that from my point of view, the existence of this value chain is uh, one of the main reasons uh, whereby uh, companies and experts from all over the world are going to get together in Bilbao in the month of April to boost uh, wind power as one of the fundamental pillars for the energy transition process. And here, I would also like to make a second uh, comment within this broad range of technologies and uh, renewables that should uh, contribute towards this transition over the next few years. And I would like to make a special mention of wind power because we believe that well, because of its characteristics and because of its capacity and development, wind power should be one of the key elements uh, for this transition anywhere in the world. And also because in the Basque Country, we are totally in favor of uh, wind power, at least from the company perspective. We live off wind power, but I think that we also breathe the wind power here. And uh, not only from a business perspective, but from the point of view of the administration, the government and all the administrations have been um, supporting this sector for many years. And it's considered to be one of the key industries of this country in terms of generating wealth and quality jobs. So this is uh, the message that I want to put across. And this is our position. And of course, we now have to work very hard so that we can organize the event of 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jose Ignacio. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the part of the proceedings where you, the members of the press corps and other members of the audience, can ask questions about next year's event. And I'm delighted now that joining me on the stage is Juan Diego Diaz, again, from the Spanish Wind Energy Association. Can I say a big thank you and good morning to all those of you who are taking part in this press conference online. I know there are a lot of you out there. We really appreciate your taking the time to be with us today. I'm sorry you cannot be with us in person. You will be pleased to know that the room high up here in the Bilbao Exhibition Center with a magnificent view over this magnificent city of Bilbao is full uh, with your colleagues and uh, other guests. And we're pleased to be sharing this occasion with all of you. So, 
We open the floor for any questions. Yes, sir. Sorry, it's fine to ask questions in uh, uh, English or Spanish. Is possible in Spanish? Yes, it's yes. either okay. is fine. Buenos días. Uh, See, what, what are the things that you pointed out? What are the problems to achieve these objectives as regards uh, generating wind power in Spain in relation to 2030 has to do with the auctions? So what do you think has to be changed in terms of the auctions in the sector? Or what do you think would have to be done for wind power to play the role it is expected to play in terms of decarbonization? Well, thank you very much. As I said, this is one of the elements that at the Spanish Association and also at a European level we are more concerned about. We believe that one of the key elements has to do with designing what has to do with the neutral side of auctions, because at a European level we've seen that neutral auctions don't work, because Jose Ignacio pointed out very clearly, because each of these energies has uh, certain characteristics. And trying to compare wind power and uh, photovoltaic energy, for instance, can only be done if you give uh, the value, the adequate value to both kinds of energy. And we've seen in auctions in Germany how, for instance, these neutral auctions that took place years ago based on price, well, PV always turns out to be the winner. But the fundamental thing is that it's not only about pricing. And, uh, it's only somebody stupid that doesn't know the difference between value and price. It's, uh, it's much more than price, it's value. In other words, it, what it contributes in terms of reducing emissions and also what it does as regards reducing market prices and what it contributes uh, seen globally from the point of view of a technology that is capable of uh, contributing more than double equivalent hours than PV. So in the end, both PV and uh, wind power are going to be technologies that are going to be necessary to reach the objectives for 2050. But let's compare pears with pears and apples with apples, and that's the objective. In response to the question, it is positive that Spain has now moved to contracts for difference as the basis for uh, your renewables auctions. Contracts for difference are the best form of renewable auctions. They are the best because they are cheap for governments, because governments, yes, pay out when the market prices are low, but they get paid back when the market prices are higher than the auction price. CFDs are also good for society as a whole because they significantly reduce the financing costs, because when you know you have a perspective of 15 years stable revenue from the contract for difference, you can borrow lots of debt at favorable rates. You do not have to finance your project so much with equity. And cheaper financing costs means cheaper wind energy. And the difference between wind farms that have a contract for difference and wind farms that don't in terms of their lifetime cost of electricity is almost twofold because of the difference in financing costs. There is one aspect of, and by the way, Contracts for Difference are becoming the standard model for renewables auctions across Europe now. They started in the UK, now it is the model in France, Denmark, Poland, Lithuania, Ireland, Greece, and many other countries are considering uh, introducing them now. And the European Commission also believes that they are a good form of renewables auction. One other aspect I'd like to comment on, and that is that the European Commission is very happy for countries to have technology-specific auctions. There's a bit of a myth out there that the EU wants countries to organize technology-neutral auctions. No, they do not. If a government of the EU says to the European Commission, we want to develop both wind and solar, that is our policy goal, to have both wind and solar, then the European Commission is perfectly happy for that country to have technology-specific auctions and it only makes sense because wind and solar deliver very different products. The value of the electricity that they are putting into the energy system is very different. So to force them to compete against each other in a technology neutral auction does not make sense. And we hope that the Spanish government uh, will now uh, uh, move uh, to their contracts for difference auctions being exclusively technology specific. 
Another question. I don't know whether any of the online participants have any questions that they wish, wish to ask. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you would wish to say, Juan Diego? No, only uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, it, it is my pleasure to be here, really pleasure. We are going to push very hard to make this uh, 2022 exhibition here in Bilbao a success. And I hope you, everybody, will be here in April 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Diego. And can I add, as Wind Europe, that once again, we are delighted to be returning here next year. We look forward hugely to our event, to seeing all of you at it, along with the whole of the European wind industry. And all of our customers, consumers, and all the stakeholders out there who have an interest in wind energy and with whom we need to work to deliver the EU's goal, which is that wind should be the bedrock of Europe's energy transition. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.